Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk Ray Bradbury. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do. We are down to just number 97 of 100 in this collection, Bradbury Stories, about to wrap up this playlist. Today's tale is the Pumpernickel, coming from an issue of Collier's in May 1951. One evening, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wells uh, walk to the deli after having seen a movie. There's a loaf of pumpernickel bread sitting on the counter and it triggers a very important memory for him going back 40 years earlier uh, to a time between high school and college just before uh, he and a group of his buddies were about to go their separate ways. They had one last camping trip out to the lake and spent the night there and they had an extra loaf of pumpernickel bread that they jokingly carved their names into. Uh, Mr. Wells, he took that loaf home and actually saved it in his room uh, for a number of years before his mother actually threw it away on him, which was very disappointing to him. Um, at that time, uh, they also agreed that 10 years later, they were going to come back to town and meet each other in front of the local courthouse to um, sort of swap stories and find out where each had managed to go in life in that first 10 years. But that was uh, 40 years ago at this point. So uh, that night, uh, Wells, uh, he takes this loaf of pumpernickel that he finds in the deli home and he plans to um, carve his name into it for old time's sake and then send it out in the mail and have, hopefully have it passed around to his other buddies just to try to trigger that memory and hopefully bring them back together. It's nighttime, uh, it's late after this movie. Um, he's feeling very sentimental, very nostalgic. Uh, seems like a great idea. Uh, but by morning, um, as things often do, uh, those ideas fade and uh, he wakes up and he finds his wife in the kitchen slicing up the pumpernickel bread and she asks him if he wants a slice. So, um, I found this sort of cheeky story to be surprisingly powerful. Um, it's amazing how a very simple sight or smell or sound can trigger um, sort of like a deep well of memory. And um, that's what this loaf of pumpernickel bread did for him. Uh, it's a very relatable story for me in that, um, you know, this guy, um, he, as a kid, he made plans, um, but yet um, you drift apart from people who you figured you'd be friends with forever, uh, and then those fit plans um, maybe never get fulfilled, or maybe um, it takes decades and decades before they ever come back together. Um, I have memories like this. Um, camping out with my buddies by our pond, um, also driving around the dirt roads in the country, um, endless um, Friday and Saturday evenings between high school and college at the local um, drive-in movie theater, which is now a car wash and a motel. Um, that drive-in theater would be pretty valuable right now, wouldn't it, with uh, COVID <laughs> keeping the, uh, the theater closed. <clears throat> uh, those guys, um, they all have families now, and then there's that, and then there's other things that have kept us apart, sort of driven wedges between us, and um, those things as well as just carelessness and moving on and things like that. But um, this year would have been my 20th, um, 20th uh, high school reunion, and um, I haven't seen um, any of these sort of close friends since, oh, oh probably probably right after college maybe, maybe right around that time. Um, uh, so it's going on uh, 16 years, 17 years. Um, there was a reunion planned for the high school class this summer and um, I, I don't think I was gonna go. Um, <laughs> I was sort of reluctant to, because um, there's some people I would have liked to have seen, but it's like they didn't keep track of me either, you know, so then, um, then there's other ones who we were never friends with to begin with and I'm just sort of not into that type of bullshit. Um, not sure if it ever happened, but um, even so, um, it's a very relatable story. I think um, most people should be able to re relate to it. I think there's probably more people who have these sort of um, stories where they drifted apart from people than there are people who basically stuck together through their entire lives. I think that's probably the more rare occasion, especially out here where, um, you know, it's country, rural, and a lot of people leave, you know, at least for several years. Um, I've noticed from the newspapers and stuff where some of these people have, I've found, have drifted back into the community, so maybe there will be some catching up to do. Uh, but still, um, the pumpernickel. Um, 
very relatable, surprisingly powerful story. A little bit too powerful for this early in the morning. Um, as the story said, you know, usually you have these ideas in the evening and then um, by morning they fade and you go back to about your normal life. But um, yeah, don't want to be thinking this dark and this nostalgic just so soon because um, there's certainly a lot of um, bad memories that float around between those good memories and the present, but uh, I'll leave it at that. <clears throat> the Pumpernickel, um, number 97 of 100 in Bradbury Stories, first appearing in Collier's Magazine in May 1951. Um, can you relate to this story? Have you read this story? What did you think about it? If you have something constructive to say or positive to say, feel free to leave the comments in the comment section below. But of course, always give my videos a thumbs up because that is very helpful with the search alg algorithm. And uh, I will be back soon with the next story, which is Last Rites, and with just um, a few more stories to go. Uh, we should wrap up this project very, very soon, possibly this week, if everything goes to plan. And then I owe you, um, I have three novels here before me that I have to review for you that I promised to do. And then after that, um, sometime in the months ahead we will jump into the short fiction of clive barker and we will read all six volumes of the books of blood so looking forward to that and that should come just in time for the halloween season which is coming very very soon so uh thank you for tuning in and i will see you again soon mm -hmm.